Today on Behind the Scenes, Handshake is headed to Under Armour, the active wear and technology brand known for its apparel, shoes, and accessories designed for sports and fitness. Under Armour's global headquarters is on 1020 Hull Street and sits on the harbor in Baltimore. Its brick buildings used to house Procter and Gamble factories that date back to 1929. Before we head to our live panel, we wanted to share footage from our recent campus tour with Rav Jordan. He's a senior university recruiter at Under Armour, and he'll show us the incredible space and introduce us to his colleagues. Welcome to our house. My name is Raphael Jordan, a university recruiter here at Under Armour. Today we're going to give you a behind the scenes tour of our global headquarters located in Baltimore, Maryland. Let's get the tour started. Behind me you'll see the waterfront. This is where our campus is located. Behind me you'll also see the most popular neighborhoods in Baltimore City, which is Canyon and Fells Point, where a lot of our rookies and teammates actually live. Now, if you don't have a car, don't worry about it. We actually have transportation located right here on our campus, which is called the Water Taxi. The Water Taxi will take you to and from work each day. Welcome to our Combine Training Center. This is our corporate class workout facility that we have on campus. Teammates here can actually do classes in the morning, during lunch, or after work. We have something called the UA50 where teammates can actually apply their package to corporate class workouts. As you can see, this is our pit. And our pit is a place that has one way in and one way out. And the workout classes are pretty challenging here. You're going to have to grind here. As you can see, our teammates to the left are busting their butts, working hard. Welcome to the Make You Famous wall. This is the wall that showcases all of our global stories that happen across the world. This is also where our key athletes such as Steph Curry, Missy Copeland, Tom Brady come. We're under our metallism that we're gonna make them famous. And our program, hey, you may have the chance to have your picture blown up on this wall and tell under our teammates how your story is told as well. So here at UA, we have something that we call culture clubs. And culture clubs are our employee resource groups. And our employee resource groups bring teammates together that have a shared common interest. We actually have Kayla here. Hey, Rob. What's going on? Who's actually going to tell us a little bit about our culture clubs. Sure. So first of all, my name is Kayla, as Rafa had mentioned. I graduated from the University of Maryland. Um, I actually was a rookie as well, summer 2013, summer 2014, and then started full-time at Under Armour in April of 2015. Um, it's been a wild ride here, and I have the privilege of being the lead advisor of our eight culture clubs that we have at Under Armour. Um, a few different things uh, for culture clubs, as Raf had mentioned, it's all about cultivating those connections, so bringing teammates together. Um, I loved that UA Beat recently had an event around financial literacy. Super important um, at any age to know where we want to go with our finances, so I thought that was a great event. Um, I also had the opportunity with our UA Unified group to participate in Pride in Baltimore. Um, last week we had with Will, which is Women Inspiring Leading Living. Um, I actually participated in a few Women's Health Week um, activities, and there were all sorts of things. Teammate talks, so a speaker forum. Um, we had some workout classes. We had a nutritionist come in, and women from not only Baltimore, but around the world that are at Under Armour were able to participate in those sessions as well. Um, a few other things. Engineering leadership, they have forums every single month about different topics. And they're interesting because they're actually based out in Austin. So most of their members are in Austin, then San Francisco, a lot of where we have our connected fitness offices as well. Um, in South Asia, Diwali was October 19th. Um, they're actually going to have a huge celebration this week now that teammates are back in the office. Uh, cultural dances, food, um, and a lot of those teammates are based at our distribution houses, um, which is interesting. So, 
you know, there's been so many different events. I'm really excited next week, actually, Veterans Day is November 11th. Um, so we have a bunch of different activities next week going on too. Uh, can't wait to, you know, continue to advise these culture clubs and see how they grow. We've only had them for a year, so there's a lot of opportunity moving forward with how these culture clubs can really cultivate those connections for teammates. Um, not to mention, we have one more culture club coming through this year. It's the Parents Culture Club, so Parents for Professional Growth. Um, so can't wait to kick that off as well. Awesome, that sounds great. Really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to the students and giving them a little bit of information about our, our culture clubs here at UA. Absolutely, great talking to you as well. Appreciate it. Have a good rest of your tour. Let's see the tour. So let's see we have some design teammates going through a design follow-up meeting. Let's check out and see what they're working on. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? Hey. Hey. What's going on? What are you all working on? We are actually just wrapping up a design review um, to talk about basketball footwear, apparel accessories, packaging, and color. Got it. That's awesome. Now, yeah. do you guys mind sharing uh, your name and what you're, what you're uh, working on? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Jess. Um, I am the senior graphic designer here at Under Armour. Um, in this meeting, I'm reviewing graphics, um, technique, all the branding, the word marks, and logos, and how they're applied to the product. Um, I'm from Ohio, and I went to the Columbus College of Art and Design. What's up, guys? My name's Adam. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. Similar to Jess, I'm a graphic designer here, so we're just collaborating with other designers and trying to work on revisions to these products. And hi, my name is Ed. I'm a footwear designer here. Um, I went to Southern Illinois at Carbondale, and I went there for industrial design, and now I'm here presenting these shoe concepts, and that's about it. Hi, I'm Taylor. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, and I'm a color designer here at Under Armour. I work with the teams to curate and then apply the color to the product. Hi, I'm Lauren. I went to McDaniel, um, graduated with communications and art um, degree. What I do here at Under Armour is packaging design, and what we do is we do all the graphics. Um, in this particular case, we're doing a footwear box, and then we send it on to the printer to be printed. Hey, I'm Jody. Uh, I went to Otis College of Art and Design, and I'm an accessories uh, design manager here, and I'm just here to make sure that the accessories tie back to the footwear apparel graphics and really working with all of our my counterparts here to make sure that we're telling a very cohesive story so that it launches successfully for the brand awesome well, thanks for sharing really do appreciate it no we'll continue the tour thanks, thanks. thanks. philanthropy is a huge part of our under armor culture not only do we want our teammates to be part of that we want our rookies to be part of that as well in the program, our interns are going to be part of the sample set, which is a retail pop-up store, and as well as a field day where you're going to get the opportunity to impact young athletes everywhere. We actually have one of our teammates, Flynn, here, who actually How works on our Give Back team. I'm good. How are you, Flynn, from the Global Philanthropy team? Uh, graduated from Dickinson College, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, senior manager here and really enjoying my time. You know, it's, it's pretty cool what we get to do here at Under Armour and the ability uh, for us to engage in the community. And, it's deep-rooted uh, from our founder all the way down. And, and what we like to say is we like to inspire uh, performance in the community with our nonprofit partners. We have grown here, uh, we'll continue to grow here, and we live here. And the opportunity for our teammates to get in the community, better Baltimore, and together uh, grow as one is something that we really are inspired by and enthusiastic about. That's awesome, that's awesome. Well, we appreciate you telling us a little bit about the Give Back team. We'll continue to tour now. Thanks. Welcome to the heart of our campus. Behind me, you'll see all of our global offices. We actually have offices in North America, South America, and across the entire world. Under Armour is a global brand. A little known fact about our brand, we actually have more offices outside of the United States than in. We want to be more than just an American brand that exports products. We want to be in our consumers' countries and learn what their wants and needs are so we can better serve them. Let's continue the tour. Welcome to the Humble and Hungry Cafe, better known as the H&H. &H. This is a place that teammates will come and have informal meetings, 
The Humble Hard Rock Cafe also serves breakfast and lunch to teammates as well. So whether you want to get our fit meal or you want to get a breakfast sandwich or pizza, you're going to be able to do that. This is a place that has its name because Under Armour realizes that we're humble enough to realize that we've had a lot of early success, but we still need to be hungry enough to realize that we still need to make our athletes better each and every day. Let's continue the tour. So now we are in our innovation lab, and this right here is an all-in exclusive look at our original t-shirt called the 0037, or the Shorty Half Set. This wall basically shows all the cool technologies that started with this original t-shirt from our founder and CEO, Kevin Plank. So as you kind of walk through this wall, you'll see the cool technologies again. Uh, my favorite uh, technology on this wall is our MagZip. So our MagZip was actually from our Design Future Show where we bring all the top founders and CEOs and you know top designers to Baltimore because great ideas aren't just found in these four walls, they're actually outside of the, the walls as well. So this technology is actually called the MagZip and the MagZip is an idea that was founded from uh, someone that had a family member that was unable to zip up their own coat. So at the bottom, it basically locks together in a mag and then it zips up and you'll see a lot of these cool technologies in our youth products. Um, then walking down the wall, you'll see our connected fitness uh, platform uh, where we're changing the way athletes are able to track and monitor their health and fitness uh, through our different mobile platforms that we have available. And then you also see our 3D technology printed shoe um, where basically this is where, you know, our 3D printing machines are able to create shoes. Um, and you'll see this in a lot of our footwear. Uh, Michael Phelps actually wore these kind of pair of shoes at the Olympics. So now we want to show you what a typical workspace looks like here at Under Armour. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. How's everything going? Great. Great. Getting things done? Yep. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let's go this way. So now we reach your desk. A lot of our workers are going to have a desk and be able to have an open setting and still be able to have that cross-functional collaborative environment here in Baltimore. Well, that's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed your tour and now you feel the passion and the relentless pursuit of innovation that Under Armour has. We look forward to seeing your application in the future. Peace out. Welcome, hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Raphael Jordan coming to you live from Baltimore, Maryland at our Under Armour headquarters. We're super excited to have you all here. We're actually going to be going live on our on our box and you know looking at the chat box and answer your questions. Uh, because of Handshake, we are fortunate enough to have over 60 schools represented, from West Coast to the East Coast. We have Morehouse, Spelman, uh, students in California. We are super excited to have you here and give you guys an in-depth view of what it means to, to work here at Under Armour. Um, at the end, we'll share some tips and uh, you know some questions on how to go about our application process. So make sure you stay tuned to that. Uh, to my left and to my right, I have some of our former interns that are going to be, you know, talking about their career path and about uh, things they worked on in the projects. So I'll let them introduce themselves and we'll start to the left. Cool. Thanks, Raph. I'm Anna. I was a rookie in the summer of 2015. I graduated Notre Dame in 2016 with Econ and Finance, and now I'm a financial analyst here in the sports division of our product team. So I'm working with the basketball team, golf, global football, um, and tennis on all their product lines and just figuring out best financial ways moving forward. One of my favorite things since being a rookie is just being involved in the rookie program. So since being back, I've been able to be a rookie coach for the next group of summer leaguers, doing a bunch of different activities. We did soccer, frisbee, so multiple week competition, and everyone really got into it. So it's been a blast being back, and I've been back for about a year now. Hi, I'm, I'm uh, Radati Simone. Uh, I'm a graduate from Auburn University. I was a rookie last summer. Uh, now I work as an ITSM 
which is Information Technology Service Management Platform Analyst. Basically, what I do with that is manage the global infrastructure of everything, every management that runs within our IT department. I majored in computer science, like I said, from Auburn University, where I also ran track and field. Something memorable about my time as a rookie last summer um, was, I think you guys saw earlier, the Make You Famous wall. At the end of the summer, we speak with uh, CEO and founder Kevin Plank in front of the Make You Famous wall. And I was actually surprised by Raf and his team by having uh, my name and all my pictures on the Make You Famous wall. So that was a really, really crazy experience, just having all my pictures up there, all my athletic pictures from running track. And it just, it just made me excited uh, about the company. And luckily, I was fortunate enough to come back. We picked like, a picture too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, man, it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Maria. Um, I am a recent graduate from Loyola, Maryland, so right down the road. Um, I studied information systems and economics, and I've, I was a rookie for the last two years, um, and now I am in IT. I'm an IT business partner, which basically means we kind of facilitate all of the technology aspects of functional areas. So if marketing or product or innovation needs a system or an enhancement to an existing system, we um, help them find a vendor and get that set up for them. So it's really cool. I get to meet a lot of people all across the company um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So I think one of, um, one of my memorable experiences was because I went to Loyola, I was so close, I actually was fortunate enough to intern during the school year as well. So um, for the last two years I worked during the school year about 20 hours a week um, and it was awesome just kind of experiencing real life uh, while you're still in school. So that was awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Nick, a uh, marketing major from Clemson University. I was actually a rookie last year um, with these guys here, actually sitting beside my, uh, my former roommate during the rookie program. Um, so I'm in the retail marketing uh, and I manage our grassroots marketing program here. Uh, one of the cool things that I got to do was uh, last year, even after the internship was over, I was brought back to open our Boston brand house, uh, one of our biggest stores here in North America and also the store in Detroit. Um, and while I was in Boston, um, I got talked into doing the 50 flight fight, uh, which was a race to the top of the Prudential Center. 50 flight of stairs, um, I almost died. Um, so I'm happy to be here today standing in front of you. One of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, but yeah, it was great, great experience. Awesome. And then for me, just a personal reflection of my, my story. Uh, so again, Raphael Jordan, um, my background was actually with Target Corporation. Uh, while working for Target, I was able to do a lot of college outreach and uh, different engagement uh, activities on college campuses. And I kind of got my passion for university recruiting. Um, and now I'm going on uh, four years, believe it or not, uh, with the brand. And it's been an awesome experience. And I'm super excited to see where the brand continues to grow and how we're going to continue to make all athletes better. All right. So awesome. So I just want to kind of just jump into it. It's going to be an open panel. Um, we're going to just bounce some questions back and forth. Uh, so I, I guess we'll, we'll start with Nick. Uh, so tell me, like, how did you arrive here? What was your path like at Under Armour? Yeah, I would say um, initially I applied um, the first time. First time I applied, I didn't get it. Um, so if you don't get it the first time you apply, don't be discouraged. Um, after the second time, um, Raph actually reached out to me via email and said, hey, you were a really strong candidate the year before. Um, you should apply again. I said, hey, sounds awesome. Um, so I applied, ended up getting the um, internship. Um, and then while here, I had the opportunity to um, join a, a great team, the same team that I'm working on now. Um, when I came here, they challenged me to um, get my project off the ground. Um, previously, before the year before, the previous intern um, was charged with the same project. They couldn't get off the ground. Um, and so when I came back, I developed a grassroots marketing program uh, for retail marketing. And then after graduation, I was brought back to uh, oversee that program and run it. So it's been really exciting. Awesome. And Anna, what about you? How did you arrive here at Under Armour? Yeah, so I've always kind of been interested in sports. At Notre Dame, I was working in the athletics department. So we switched from Adidas to Under Armour in my junior year. So kind of was thinking about it, saw all the new uniforms, all the new athletes wearing everything, thought it was awesome. So kind of got involved, heard about the brand from there, and then was interning uh, with the sourcing finance team. So working on different vendor financials, um, doing that for the summer as well as the margin report. And then when I came back, came back on the product side of things. So a little bit of a switch, um, but still had that great finance experience and be able to relate that both from college and then from my internship. Got it, awesome. Uh, now, Maria, so tech, like what does a day in the life look like someone that's working in that technical field here at Under Armour? So my job is very interesting because it's 
it's really a blend. It's an awesome blend of business and technology. Um, because we work with so many functional partners, I'm back and forth um, campuses very often. So I work at Building 37, which is our new, um, it's our new building on our Port Covington campus. So it's, we're some of the first employees that are ever working in that new campus space, which is awesome. Um, and so I'm back and forth at meetings uh, to the original campus, meeting with different functional partners, um, building requirements, things like that, um, kind of finding out their pain points mm -hmm. um, and seeing how we can really improve like their processes and um, how we can grow the brand through technology, which right. is really awesome. Awesome, awesome. Now, we're that too. We alluded to earlier, our company culture is very fast paced. Um, it's a very innovative company. How do you think Under Armour is our culture? How, how unique is it to you? Well, I can definitely touch on that. Um, like you said, it's very fast paced. It's very dynamic. And uh, the culture here, it's like as soon as you step on campus, there's so much energy with every teammate. We don't call each other employees, we call each other's teammates because we're truly a team here at Under Armour. And the energy that just radiates from teammates around you, you kind of feed off it, feed off it and it's shared between. So you step on campus and it's like you, you want to get to work, you know, whether that's at your desk, that's in the gym, whatever, whatever aspect, as soon as you step here in Baltimore, Tide Point, Port Covington, you're just ready to get to work. And just having everybody around you that has that same ambition, it's so easy to just go with it. Awesome, awesome. So actually, we have a question from uh, our, our live chat box. So we have Natalie from University of Kentucky. Uh, she asks, what do you believe is the biggest challenge working at Under Armour? Maria, if you want to take this one. Sure. So I would say um, one of the biggest challenges is, um, for me at least, being an intern for the last two years, um, it's easy to kind of think that you need to know everything. Um, so. I came into it when I was hired full time in June and I was very worried about making mistakes um, because I had been in the internship program for two years. So I think just allowing myself to make mistakes and, and be okay with saying, hey, I'm still, I'm still a new teammate, I'm growing and um, everyone is just so helpful and they absolutely understand like and want to help me learn as much as I possibly can. So um, even overcoming the fear of making mistakes, the teammates around me have really helped with that. Got it, awesome, awesome. We actually have another question from Angelica from Clark Atlanta, um, who wants to know, what are some of your most favorite UA innovations over the past few years? Hmm. I, I, would, I, can, I can answer. Um, one of my favorites, of course, is the, uh, the cold gear technology um, that's now being implemented in a lot of the uh, apparel. Um, especially this is this will be my first winter in Baltimore, um, so I'm looking <laughs> I'm really looking forward to uh, getting some of that cold gear. Um, it really keeps you warm. Like I said, I had the opportunity to open um, Boston uh, when it was really cold, um, and that's one of the products I use to keep warm during that uh, during that period of time. So I would I would definitely say cold gear um, is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, and I, I'll, I'll touch on that too. Um, one of my favorite UA innovations. I'm a huge runner. You know, I ran track long distance at Auburn. Uh, it's definitely the charge cushioning. I actually recently, just yesterday, I got a pair of char ba charge banded threes. And I mean, just now uh, during lunch, I ran six miles on the treadmill. Uh, last summer when I was a rookie, I was training for uh, my upcoming track season. I was running 90, 95 miles a week during the summer in UA gear. And there was no injuries at all. It's just like having that innovation, it's like you're just running on clouds the whole time. So definitely my favorite UA innovation would be the charge cushioning in the running shoes. That's awesome. And you'll probably start to see a lot of our uh, Technology is going in a lot of our apparel and accessories as we continue to roll out those assortments. Uh, so we actually have another question uh, from Tammy uh, from University of Gonzaga. Uh, so Anna, what were some of the adversities that you had to go through when you were an intern? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So you get a project and you're working on your project for the whole summer, but you're also asked for a bunch of different things. So you may work on that 50, 60% of your time, but you're still managing um, with your manager what else needs to get done. So being in a small department, being in a small company, in a f small finance org, you're always asked for to work on different projects and get involved in a bunch of stuff. So just kind of prioritizing and figuring out what's the best use of your time. And then also just transitioning from being a student to being an intern. The daily schedule is a lot different um, you're working on different projects, so just making sure you're getting all your work done by different deadlines. And then outside of that, of course, the rookie program has a lot of great events planned for you. So you're going to the Ravens games, you're going out to the Orioles to see everything. So you're really experiencing the city. So just making sure that you're doing both and doing both to the fullest extent. Got it. Awesome. Now, Maria, another question for you. Um, so I know that you're working on a lot of different processes and things like that. 
Do you feel as if you've made an impact since you started working here at Under Armour? Absolutely. Even as an intern, um, my very first project my first summer was implementing a project management software for the marketing team, and it's still being used today. Um, so, and more teams are using it. So we started off with marketing, and now global communications is jumping on there, global store development, which is really neat. Like, that, that was my baby. Like, that's my project. And I um, saw it from start to finish, all the way through implementation. And now I still work on getting new teams in there. So even as an intern, I was able to implement a system that's still around today, which is awesome. Oh, that is awesome. Now, this is a question for, for everyone on the panel. What's been the most rewarding part of working with the brand? I think the most rewarding part is that you're really working for something bigger than yourself. Like you're really working to make all athletes better. You're working for that little girl or that little boy that's putting something on. And there's a really strong connection to that. So I think in college I knew I wanted to work in the sports realm because everyone's interested in sports. Everyone has something you're cheering for and really understand that on any given Sunday you can all walk into the stadium and, and join together and cheer for something. So being at Under Armour, you're really being a part of that. Coming together as teammates every day and just working, whether it's in finance, IT, marketing, like you have a connection to that and you're really making a difference in the world. Yeah, exactly. I definitely agree. Um, I think the most rewarding thing is that as soon as you come to Under Armour, whether it's as a rookie, whether it's full time, uh, you matter. You know, the work you do matters and it makes an impact. And you know, you look around, everybody's working together as a team, you feel like you matter, you contribute, your thoughts count, your work counts. And it's, it's just the fact that it's rewarding in the sense that you know you come to work every day and everything that you do contributes to the company, makes the company grow, and yourself grow as well. I think what's most rewarding for me is be participating in all of the give back activities that we do as a, as a company. So um, we have tons of community service opportunities where individual teams or company-wide goes, we go to elementary schools and um, paint and fix up local schools and we volunteer with reading programs um, and it's just a great way um, to get involved in the community and really give back so Under Armour likes to say when we do well we do good um, and I love that saying it's one of my favorites um, and I think there are so many opportunities to really make an impact outside of just selling shirts and shoes which is awesome. Yeah I would say with me um, managing the uh, retail marketing grassroots program uh, we do a ton of events. Um, we manage uh, a lot of partnerships in our communities, whether it's in Detroit or Boston or Orlando. Um, and there's just a ton of partnerships that we have each and every week and being able to see those experiences come to life and being able to deliver those experiences to our athletes, I think is extremely rewarding. Um, we partner with um, pretty much everyone, whether it's you know, moms in Orlando, whether it's local gyms in you know, Detroit, whether it's you know, different studios in, in Boston. Um, I would say just, just bringing all of those uh, different communities together in our stores to uh, have those experiences um, is something I find extremely rewarding. Awesome. Now, our program, it's, it's pretty competitive. We do get a lot of intern uh, applications, student applications rather, uh, for our program. Do you have any tips for students that are going through the interview process, whether it may be um, the resume or you know, having someone look over it or practicing interviewing? Any tips that you think would be good for them to know? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say for me, um, and again, like I said, I, I didn't get it the first time. The first time um, I interviewed, I showed up to my web interview in a suit. Um, if you look around, nobody here is in a suit. That's really not an enormous culture. So I would, I would definitely say understanding where you're applying, understanding an enormous culture, and showing that you're passionate about the brand um, definitely goes a long way. Um, and to add, to add to that, I would say that uh, definitely have some diversity in your background, you know. All four of us, five of us here, Raph included, we have all came from complete different backgrounds. And it's the fact that when you come here as a team, both in Baltimore and globally as well, um, your diversity is what makes the impact to your team. If everybody thought the same, uh, you know, we'd get nothing done. So definitely just have your own story, come here, add it to our story as a team. So just, yeah, just have a good, good diverse background, well-versed. Um, that's what I would say. Awesome. Now, living in Baltimore, so being in Baltimore, uh, it's fun. Uh, I'm from Maryland. I love this city, but from I think from my understanding, you guys aren't from not a lot of you are from from Baltimore area. So how's it been adjusting to to the Baltimore uh, community and you know living in the city? 
Yeah, I'm from New Jersey, so my family is like three hours away, um, and it's great. I absolutely love living in Baltimore. I live like a mile away. I live with another former rookie, so we have a great time just being able to explore the city. There's a lot of young people that work here and all hang out together too, so it's fun being able to come to work and also have your friends here as well. So whether it's going to Ravens games, going to Orioles games, um, playing in your own intramural, teams around the city, like there's just so much to get involved in, it's really accessible. So there's no, you know, money gaps or anything, like you're really able to get in and do as much as you can. Anything else gonna add about living in Baltimore? Yeah, I would say being from um, the South, I'm from South Carolina, which is extremely different. Um, being in Baltimore, I live in the Inner Harbor, and just being able to walk to everything, um, I can get off work, I can walk to a nice restaurant, um, I can walk to the store and walk home, and you know, and that's after parking my car, I never have to get in my car again. Um, so just moving up here, you, you know, you understand that you don't need a car. Those are some things you don't need. Um, so I think just having everything right there that's accessible to you um, is an extreme, you know, benefit from being up here in Baltimore. Yeah, um, I actually grew up an hour and a half away, so I'm local, um, Waldorf, Maryland, Southern Maryland. And you would think that since I'm from Maryland, I come to Baltimore, it's kind of the same thing. But Baltimore really is, it's, it's, its, own, it's its own beast, you know. Like, it's so fun. It has its own essence to it that you really can't explain unless you're from Baltimore, you know, and um, back in September, we actually had a campaign, We Will, um, just like, like Maria spoke on earlier, just give backs with the city, and it's when you do stuff like that that you're really, you're really grateful for the city because um, everything we do is for them. We are the city, so. Awesome, awesome. So I always ask everyone, uh, whenever they are on a panel with me, it's one thing that you would tell yourself if you could go back to college. Um, kind of putting you guys on the spot here a little bit, but if you guys could go back to college, what's something that you would do do differently that would prepare you better uh, for your role or just in life as you kind of go through your careers? I think um, something that I would tell myself is just don't take yourself too seriously. Um, I was someone that couldn't really, ad I could adapt, but I, I didn't like change. And Under Armour is changing constantly. Um, as we say, it's a new company every six months. So um, just being able to go with the flow and roll with things how they come um, that, that's definitely one thing that I would tell myself. Um, being a collegiate athlete at Auburn, it's uh, very time constricting. So one thing I would tell myself back in college would just be, I, I know that there's practice every single day, it's hard to even study for classes, but uh, something that I would try to tell myself back then is definitely, you know, try to join groups. I know, I know a lot of people's schedules are busy, even if you're not in any groups, even if you're just taking classes, I know how rigorous classes are. But I would definitely say try and stretch yourself a little bit because it pays off in the long term. You know, join that club that you're on the fence about, thinking, oh, we'll have time for it. Just go out and do it, and um, you'll definitely you'll definitely enjoy the benefits you can reap from that. Yeah, I think I would say just make yourself uncomfortable as much as possible. So once you get into the workplace, like there's a lot of different challenges that you'll experience that definitely put you out of the box, and make yourself uncomfortable. So just continue to challenge yourself. You can get into those teams or clubs and find yourself being comfortable with your friend group, comfortable in your major and your classes. So just trying to stretch out of that as soon as you can and just get a diverse amount of things so that when you are applying for internships and when you are coming into a job, you feel like you're ready to tackle anything. Yeah, I would definitely say for me, it's, it's about being open-minded. It's about being flexible. Um, I know that when you get into a major, you kind of have this vision in your head of what you want to uh, do when you graduate. Um, but there's, there's tons of opportunities out there. I would say don't be afraid to pursue any opportunity. And also don't be afraid to you know, research outside of your textbook. Your textbook is going to provide you with lots of important information. But kind of know what industry you want to go in and don't be afraid to study that industry outside of the classroom as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm seeing a lot of questions about uh, just the program in general, about the application process. So I definitely want to take this time to answer those questions. Uh, so our program is a 10 to 12 week paid internship right here in Baltimore, Maryland. So when you apply for our internship program, uh, you should be banking on being in the Baltimore City area. Um, like I said, it is a paid internship, so you are going to get some a little bit of change in your pocket. Uh, we offer opportunities across the entire business. So if you're someone that wants to do accounting, finance, supply chain, you're going to get the opportunity to do that. Uh, if you go into our website, you're going to be able to apply to three different roles. Uh, so you're going to apply to the business uh, and operations role. So that's where if you're accounting, finance, uh, HR, communications, marketing, you should apply for that one. Um, if you are interested in the technical role, you should apply to the technical role where it's going to be uh, information technology, web development, mobile development, engineering, materials uh, development, you should apply for that one. Um, and if you're interested in the creative role, you should apply for the creative role where you're going to have to uh, 
have a portfolio uploaded and we're really gonna be looking for the aesthetic. So try to have a diversified portfolio. Um, and then if you're interested in the MBA role, you should definitely apply for that role. So any students that are graduating uh, between, or between their first and their second year, they should apply for the MBA role. Um, our application process is open until December 15th. Uh, so if you have yet to apply for the program, uh, definitely go on our website and check it out. You have until December 15th, 2017. Um, and we do look at applications on a rolling basis. Um, although it is a competitive internship program, don't let that be a barrier for you not to want to apply for the program. Still go through the process um, and, and see where it goes. As you can see, there's a lot of different stories how people have been able to land an internship in our program. And I promise you that when you apply for that role and you get this internship pro program, you're going to change your life and you're going to be able to make an impact to make all athletes better. Um, one question that someone just asked in a lot of chat boxes, do we offer travel and relocation assistance? And to answer your question, yes, we do. Uh, we do offer uh, flight and train reimbursement um, for students that have a permanent address greater than about 50 miles from our, our corporate headquarters. So we'll get you here to and from Baltimore. And as you heard Nick and Anna allude to, we do offer housing assistance as well. Um, so you're going to be able to live with interns um, in corporate housing. And it's basically four interns to an apartment, two to a room. And it's kind of like college dormitory style living. So we'll uh, definitely take care of you from that end. Um, and you're going to be able to really you know, be in, immersed in the city and see what the city has to offer. I've seen interns uh, go to Washington, D.C. I've seen interns go to uh, New York. So you're going to be conveniently located to a lot of different places in the metro areas as well. Um, so that's all we have. Do you guys have any other final remarks about internship or any words of advice? Uh, don't hesitate to apply. Uh, Tons of people are applying, but don't 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 think that that uh, stops you from applying. Definitely go out. Um, you, yeah, you definitely won't regret it. It's, it's one of the greatest experiences that's ever happened to me. Uh, so definitely apply. Yeah, I would say um, stand out. Don't be afraid to be unique. Um, don't 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 be afraid to be unique. You know, make sure you stand you stand out in the application process, um, and make sure you differentiate yourself with um, all the other ap applicants. Yeah, this is like the most exciting time in your life right now. You're kind of right on that edge of deciding what you're going to do. So just have fun with it. Try a bunch of different things and just apply a bunch of different places until you find, find the right spot. And I would say be persistent. So um, a lot of us didn't get the first internship that um, we applied for, even this one. Um, and so just keep trying. It's great practice. And you get to meet a lot of people even through the inter internship pro interview process, uh, even if you don't get the internship. So... Got it. And for me, I would say my advice uh, is just be authentic. As you can see, we're all very authentic individuals. Uh, to work here with our brand, you don't have to be a, a athlete or a former Division One, Division Two, or the th Division Three athlete. You're looking for we're looking for someone that's going to come here um, and you know really try to make us you know improve our process, improve our you know systems to to make us continue to be the biggest and brightest brand brand in the world. Uh, so again, we look forward to seeing your applications. You have until December uh, 15th um, to go on our careers website, careers.underarmor.com, and we look forward to seeing your applications. See you.